So we're looking at a pretty well circumscribed large specimen, um, and I've been calling this like cotton candy colored. Ooh, I like it. Cotton candy colored, yeah. Pretty good, like pink, purplish, a little bit of blue. Like lavender too, almost. Like whatever, yeah. whatever yeah. works for us. I like it. It's pretty. Very um, pretty. So kind of biphasic, like two well i guess a few different colors but kind of two different colored cell populations um almost oriented nodules within the specimen yeah definitely there's multi-nodular it's a big nodule with multiple smaller nodules packed together and then like you said biphasic we've got these nodules the one part and then in between there's some other stuff which we can go look at closer yeah well maybe Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell me about tell me about the two populations we're looking at here. Um, so I think we're seeing fibroblasts. Okay. And then mm, kind of like um, almost like those like plump fascicles. Yeah, they're they're they don't they're not. They're kind of nondescript cells. They're kind of slightly plump, spindle to oval cells. And they do look here like they're arranged in a little bit of fascicles. And they're kind of compressed between these very prominent, dilated, branching, interconnected spaces. Some people would call these staghorn-shaped vessels or, or hemangioperiocytic vessels after our, um, the old tumor hemangiopericytoma that has vessels like this that we now call solitary fibrous tumor. But lots of different tumors, including this one, can have that staghorn hemangioperiocytic vascular pattern of these kind of branching, uh, you know, antler shaped vessels and then bland spindle cells. And then here also bland spindle to oval cells, although much less cellularity. Right. And they have that background that, like you said, is kind of a pinkish blue kind of color. OK, so what do you think? That, and then in some places you see the cells kind of pushing into vessels. See how it's kind of bulging into the lumen of a vessel? That's a useful little clue. You can see it here also kind of kind of bulging and growing into these uh, kind of crescent shaped vascular channels. So what did you think this was? A myofibroma. Yeah, very good. This is a myofibroma. So these cells are myofibroblastic by by, you know, they stain with actin, but they're Desmond negative usually. But as I told you before, myofibroblasts and fibroblasts to me probably exist on a close to on a spectrum, at least the lesions that are fibroblastic or myofibroblastic seem to all have a lot of overlap and similarity uh, to their cells. Um, but the classic finding, this is a very classic example. There are some variants that look quite different from this, but this is the, the one to learn myofibroma on because you get these big nodules. These are called myoid nodules, but I don't really love that name because they don't look like muscle at all to me. In fact, they, the bluish color is very common in these. <clears throat> and to my eye, it looks kind of chondroid almost. It gives you that kind of chondromyxoid look. And sometimes the cells almost have like, look like they're like, you know, little tiny spaces, like little lacunar spaces. Not really, but they give me the feel of like kind of cartilage looking appearance. And so I, I like to teach these as pseudochondroid nodules because that bluish kind of uh, myxoidy or chondromyxoid color is usually present, at least in, to some extent. And then in between the nodules, you have a more cellular spindled or sometimes even round cell blue cell population with these really prominent branching vessels and in the cellular area it's not uncommon to see mitotic activity sometimes even pretty uh, uh, brisk mitotic activity but you don't see pleomorphism usually these are very bland and monotonous cells even though they can be mitotically active and these are classically seen in babies <clears throat> and they can either be solitary or multiple, and rarely you can have like more generalized forms where the patient has multiple lesions on the skin or even internal organ lesions. And when they're numerous and involving internal organs, they can actually cause you know, problems and even rarely uh, death. But otherwise, aside from the super rare scenarios, these are totally benign. And um, in fact, sometimes they even regress on their own. They, even when they're incompletely excised, they usually do not recur. I've seen it sometimes where they've recurred, but in general, they are benign and very indolent. And, um, and okay, so they are most common in kids, in babies especially, but I've seen them even in older adults too. And there are other forms that are more cellular than this, that kind of have infiltrative borders, that don't have well-formed chondroid, uh, pseudochondroid nodules, and those can be harder to, to recognize and diagnose microscopically. I, I co-authored a paper with Dr. Weiss and some others about that uh, years ago, and um, 
I'll put a link to that down below in case you're curious to learn more. But this is a classic example of myofibroma. This one's in the subcutis. Sometimes they can be up in the dermis as well. Um, okay, great. Any questions? And you, Oh, and they can also develop some uh, degree of calcification, um, which a lot of different tumors can get some some focal metaplastic calcifications uh, inside, or dystrophic calcifications in them, or even uh, metaplastic bone or things like that. And uh, usually this is an H&E diagnosis to me. I feel like when I see one of these, I don't do any stains. It's just classic. I don't know what else would look like this. Okay.